Students get grades all the time, so why not do the same for teachers? There's now a push to rate teachers based in part on how well their students perform on standardized tests. The numeric value derived from this process is referred to as a student impact rating. When it comes to important factors involved in a good education, the quality of the teacher is usually at the top of the list. But evaluating how well an instructor does in the classroom has always been difficult because of other socioeconomic variables that are hard to measure. The teachers' unions are vehemently opposed to linking teacher evaluations to standardized testing. They took out this full-page ad, full ad in the Boston Globe last week, outlining why they think it's a bad idea. At this point, the program is tied up in state budget negotiations, but state education officials remain committed to implementing it. Joining me now to outline the pros and cons are Barbara Mattaloni, president of the Mass Teachers Association, and Mitchell Chester, the state's commissioner of elementary and secondary education. Thank you both for being here. Glad to be, Glad here. To be here. So, Barbara, let me start with you. Mm. Okay. Students, as you know, take all sorts of tests all the time, starting at a very young age. What's wrong with asking the teachers who get them ready for those tests to be gauged uh, in part on how well the kids do? Well, the simplest answer is that there's no valid or reliable way to do that. Uh, that, that there is no mechanism by which we can say this student's test score on this day at this moment is related to the effectiveness of the teacher. Uh, the fact that we're even discussing that given that we know that there's no valid or reliable way to do that um, is absurd. But let me uh, ask you, just, just so I'm clear on this, we're not talking about looking at uh, one day in isolation, right? We're looking at the change in a given group of students. Which is uh, even being... more unreliable and invalid in the sense that we don't have a way uh, to say that this child's change from this moment in time to this moment in time is relative to what the teacher has done. Okay. There are much more important and meaningful ways to look at student learning, and educators do that all the time. They look at the assessments that they develop in their classroom. They know their students. In terms of teacher evaluation, administrators can come and talk with them about the student work that they see. Let me stop see. you there just to get Mitchell in here. Mitchell, sure. uh, what do you, what do you uh, take <clears throat> issue with there? Because obviously you think this is a good idea. Yeah, I mean, I start with the proposition that uh, included in teacher evaluation, we have to look at how students are doing, how well students are learning, how well our actions as, as teachers are promoting student learning. That's, that's the core of the work that we do in schools. I can't imagine imagine hospitals refu refusing to look at physician's ability to diagnose and, and uh, uh, deal with, with uh, patient symptoms. We've designed a system that uh, is very, uh, very expansive in terms of what school districts can look at. And in fact, we've left it to school districts, teachers working with their administrators, to figure out what measures of student learning would be most appropriate, most directly uh, linked to the work that they're doing in their classrooms day to day. So if this thing goes forward, how would, how, and hop back in one second, how would it work, technically speaking? What would be measured and when would it be measured? So again, that's very much left to local school districts. Districts. We require them to look at students' year-to-year -year learning gains on our state test where they're available. But most of uh, what's going to be used to make those measurements are, are assessments uh, that teachers have designed in their own school district or that school districts are already using as part of uh, instructional practice. So as I hear you tell it, just one piece and not even necessarily that big a piece, uh, I'm guessing you I, I have think, a different well, I think the first thing that's important to say is that we are not opposed to looking at student work as part of understanding what's happening in classrooms and a teacher's effectiveness. That's not this at all. What we are opposed to is the, the pseudoscience of pretending that you can either use standardized testing like MCAS or PARC, or use uh, non-standardized testing, district-determined <laughs> measures, and determine through some sort of pre- and post-assessment the teacher's effectiveness. We have research that shows, Steve Cerici uh, from the University of Massachusetts Amherst, who is a psychometrician, says very clearly, using student growth percentiles in order to determine st uh, teacher effectiveness, it's like flipping a coin. So you have as good a chance so I, using I would, these statistical models of being rated an excellent teacher or a poor teacher. So if, if the model's that if bad, our system, why would we use it at all? If our system was designed around taking one look at one test, one set of test results, I would agree with you. But that's not at all what this system but is. What we're asking this is system, to take this that system part out. requires but that school districts 
look at a variety of measures right. of student and we're not learning. To and that. I take and I take you know but I take we're not opposed I, I take, to that, but we're but you don't want this one. You really, really don't like the idea of this one being a in statistical it. model, which is is opposed by the American Statistical Association for being used in the way that you're using <coughs> it. Right, I want to hop in that? here as a, a surrogate other... for any parents who might be watching. I have a couple mm -hmm. kids who are in the public schools. And I have to confess, uh, and I hope I can remain uh, neutral and an honest broker of information here, if I knew that my kid had a choice between one teacher who year to year uh, was able to bring their, uh, their students' MCAS scores up by a significant amount, and another teacher whose students' MCAS scores just stayed static or even dropped, I would want my kids to have the former teacher. So what's wrong with that? I would say that we don't have a measure to determine if it's the teacher who's done that. Well, you don't know it. Okay? Correlation that, isn't always thing. causation, but it can be. The other thing that I would invite be. you to think about is if, and I would really seriously, as like a teacher to a parent, yeah. say, don't be looking at MCAS scores to determine what's happening in your child's classroom. And really, like, don't. It is not, as a matter of fact, if you're in a classroom where you're seeing that, I would be concerned that what's happening in that classroom is a, is a model of teaching to the test that neglects the wide range of things that happen in a classroom that are much more important and that, in fact, may not be measured on a test. I hear you. Mitchell Chester. So just just yeah. to pick up on your comment, I hear three things from parents, a very short list of what they're interested in. Are, are, are their children happy in school? Are they safe? Are they learning? M MCAS is one measure of that. I would never tell a parent that that's the only thing that you should look at, but it's a very important and honestly, barometer. But can I, it's an but can I, can oh, wait, I just, I think, I think, I think on it's time really for time important to, to clarify something yeah, here, sure. because it, it's <clears throat> what we are opposed to is using the pseudoscience I've heard that of a, a measure times, yeah. of a of a of a statistical measure of a teacher's I, effectiveness, I, I, again, which I, has been proved Barbara. to be unreliable and invalid. Got to go back to we Mitchell here because I've heard to that using other metrics got as it. part of an evaluation. I, I, I think you're creating a, a slogan, a, a caricature of what this system is it about. Is. It's not. It's not a pseudoscience. American Statistical it's, Association wait, hold up, is about if, if I might. You know, teachers have been. Uh, grading students, designing tests, giving students grades for years. That is Teachers not what we're are talking about. we're talking. Well, they base that on students' we're, learning. So to call what this is talking about to Mitchell, call this. You know that. I think the, it's really not a fair wait, can you, presentation. Can we just let him finish here, we, we would, but I have to say, Barbara, we got to we got to we got to let him. No, we got to let him finish here because I'm by an unfair representation of what's happening. I really am. Mitchell, why don't you take one more crack at it? Again, if we were saying that we should make judgments about how effective a teacher is based on a test score. In, in, at one point in time, I would be very concerned about that. That's not at all what this system is. And in fact, this system puts in the hands of teachers in each district a lot of the decision making about how, what do we want to, what do we want to accomplish with our students and how are we going to measure it? And use that as a feedback loop to look at what kinds of practices and what kinds of policies in our schools are getting better learning Let gains than others. Let me run through a couple Can more I? points here just because there's a, sure. this has um, been a, a more sure. substantive discussion, a more intense and maybe more static discussion than I thought it might be. This would be used for all teachers, right? Gym teachers, special education teachers, music teachers. They would, if this model is implemented, have test scores be a factor in their evaluation, right? No, not necessarily test scores because test scores may not be relevant to that phys ed teacher. Okay. Again, it would be up to the school district to figure out what kinds of measures of whether you're an effective Okay, there's your answer. I got a teacher. question for you, and my question for you is, um, my question for you is, what are these evaluations used for? When they, whether they include test scores or not, what are these statewide evaluations, what, what impact will they have on an individual teacher's life? It will determine whether or not the, the nature of the kinds of professional development plan that they would have to work on. But it also, I think that's a really important question. And I, I know it's really important to understand that we are opposed to a, a very narrow and particular way that this is being used that has no validity. We support using student assessments in understanding the work, but not in determining a rating of a teacher based on that. And we're being told that that has to happen everywhere and that those ratings have to be reported. All right, last question. Superintendents yes. are opposed to it and school committees are opposed school to it. School districts are, are and this in is not, favor, correct? This or, is not simply the teachers union. 
we unfortunately have to wrap up here, but a quick one word prediction from each of you. Is the Senate amendment that would uh, require that this not be used, the test scores not be used, is it going to pass or not? You know, I, I'm not sure one how answer, to predict uh, that, word, but, but maybe? It's, I think it's a, a terribly misguided policy to right. say that Barbara, this, what's your prediction? To say that, we, that the state cannot require that student learning be a factor. Quick prediction that from Barbara, and then we got to cut saying. it off. That All is right, not no what predictions. We're I'll, I'll hit you up for predictions on Twitter. <laughs> Barbara Mattaloni, Mitchell saying. Chester, thank you both. Thanks for having us on. Let's do it again.